talk about Native American food. It's November, therefore it's Native American Heritage Month. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. There is no more relevant time to talk about Native American and Indigenous food than right now. I really wanted to get this up before Thanksgiving because at Thanksgiving I'm going to put on my table a few dishes that honor like true pre-colonized Native American food. So if this is also something that you're interested in, you have landed on the right video. When you search Native American food online, the first hit is always fry bread. But fry bread is not true indigenous food because Native Americans did not have wheat or wheat flour until the European settlers arrived. And fry bread as a dish was not created until the government started to put Native Americans on reservations and gave them food rations in the form of the Commodity Food Program. Fry bread was born out of necessity in this era of oppression. There's no fry bread in this video. We're only making the true pre-colonized indigenous food. This book is where I'm drawing all my pre-colonized Native American food recipes from. I myself am not at all Native American, so I didn't know any of this until I started doing the research and largely through his work. So according to Sean, what is not true Native American indigenous food are things like wheat flour, dairy products, sugar, domestic pork, and beef. If it has any of those ingredients, then you can't truly call it Native American food. What is true indigenous Native American food are ingredients like venison, rabbit, river and lake trout, duck, quail, wild turkey, blueberries, sage, sumac, timsala, wild turnip. This is what we're gonna make today. Are you ready? Crispy bean cakes. And then we're going to make squash and apple soup with fresh cranberry sauce. For the crispy bean cakes, this is what you'll need. Two cups cooked or canned beans drained, one to two teaspoons of chopped fresh sage, one duck egg, but you can sub out with a chicken egg if you don't have a duck egg, one fourth of a cup chopped wild onion, or if you don't have that, you can swap out one whole shallot, pinch of salt, pinch of crushed juniper. Crushed juniper is not something everybody's gonna have. If you happen to find it in a specialty grocery store, great. A fourth of a cup of corn flour, three to four tablespoons of sunflower oil, and one pinch of suma. I love this food processor. It makes everything so easy. In a food processor fitted with a steel blade, pulse together all of the ingredients to make a rough dough. Fresh sages. Mm. So this is what sumac looks like. It comes from a berry, the sumac berry, and it's really, really, really good. In a lot of uh, Middle Eastern cuisine, they, they'll sprinkle it over the meat and over the rice, and it adds this like sweet and sour depth of flavor. It's, it's hard to explain, but it is so, so good. I'm just gonna put some salt and pepper in this real quick, just to season it. And then this, is my Himalayan pink salt. Might not be the most indigenous ingredient that we can use in this, but this, this is what I have, so I'm just gonna use it. It looks like a pretty confection. It smells nice. It smells like it's gonna taste really good. I don't know for how long we're supposed to do this, but it says until it forms a rough dough, which what it looks like. It's extremely wet though. Is it supposed to look this wet? Fill a skillet with the oil and set over medium heat. Form the mixture into patties about half an inch thick. Working in batches, fry the patties until golden brown on each side, which takes about five to seven minutes per side. So these are very, very wet. And I'm not sure if that's correct or if I've done something wrong still. You know they're getting close to being ready to, to flip when you can actually move the cake around without it falling apart completely. For the squash and apple soup, it's pretty simple, really simple ingredients as well. So this is what you need. 
two tablespoons sunflower oil, one wild onion or half a cup of chopped shallot, two pounds of winter squash, seeded, peeled, and cut into one inch cubes. Squash soups like this are so delicious and satisfying. One tart apple, cored and chopped. It says one tart apple, but I have two of these left. One cup of cider, three cups of corn stock or vegetable stock, one tablespoon maple syrup or more to taste, salt to taste, sumac to taste, and then cranberry sauce to garnish. Heat the oil in a deep, heavy saucepan over medium heat and saute the onion, squash, and the apple until the onion is translucent for about five minutes. Stir in the stock and cider. This is boiling, it looks and smells perfect. Now I'm gonna turn the heat down to just a simmer and let that go for about 20 minutes or just until the squash gets really, really soft and breaks apart easily. salt. Super creamy without actually having any cream. I have not even tasted this, but simply by the way it looks, You've got that beautiful like pumpkin-y squash color punctured by the cranberry, like that wine cranberry. Oh my God, it's so creamy. You definitely are not gonna miss putting cream in this. You don't need cream in this. I think the soup is gorgeous and these bean cakes are delicious. And this is a really wonderful way to honor Native American Heritage Month to serve something at your Thanksgiving table that speaks to true indigenous pre-colonized Native American culture. Thanksgiving is a really poignant time to do it because even though we celebrate Thanksgiving like it was the coming together of Native Americans and pilgrims, I'm not gonna go into the history of that, but it was much, much, much darker than that. If you want other resources for Native American Heritage Month, I have a permanent highlight on my Instagram page, which I'll link below. Just go to that highlight, you can click on it. I've got tons of resources on indigenous owned businesses, content creators, other chefs, other recipes. I wish you all a wonderful, warm, happy food coma Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next time.